Hello and welcome to Chapter 6, Supporting I.O. Devices, Part 2. Let's continue. We're left off uh, at the uh, virtual reality headsets. So KVM switches. KVM, please write this down because this is important. You'll find out, you'll find these KVM switches a lot in the, in the server rooms. The KVM, which stands for Keyboard Video and mass mouse switch so if you have several servers in the um so here's what i want you to write let's write that the definition first a switch that allows you to use one keyboard a monitor and a mouse for multiple computers a kvm switch can be useful in a server room so if you have a server room with seven or eight servers um, you don't want to have a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor for every server so you can have all of these servers, the boxes connected to the one switch, and the switch is connected to one uh, keyboard and a mouse. And you can switch between all the seven or eight servers. So a lot of you save a lot of real estates and money that way. All right. So um, installing an adapter card. So let's talk about that. Uh, follow the same steps that you would install any external device. Don't forget to use the electrostatic discharge uh, wrist strap, as we discussed in week one. Okay. Um, so that's all I'm going to say with that when you are installing these cards, internal cards. Um, okay. Sound cards. Um, there are two uh, Sony Philips digital interfaces. The SPDIF. The ports are used to connect to external sound equipment such as DVDs and CDs. Okay. Um, what else do you need to know? That's for the laptop. Okay, let's talk about the video subsystem. So that's important. Let's talk about the monitors. So you have the LC monitors, which stands for liquid crystal display. That's an old type, believe it or not. So no longer, not no longer in use. Okay. So what makes up the image? Image is made up of dots. Each dot is called a pixel, and uh, your video card that's sitting on your computer tells you know, you know, sends out where the pixel is going to be, what location, uh, the lumin luminous, how bright it's going to be, and what color. So you need all of that information for one dot. So, you know, you could have about 16 bits of information or 32 bits sometimes. If you have 1080 by 800 pixels, that's one frame. And to be able to see um, a good motion picture, your eyes, you need to send about 24 frames a second. So the more pixels, the closer they are together, the higher the resolution, of course. Your monitor got to be able to handle and your card for example got to be compatible with the monitor so if your computer video card can only do 1080 by 800 or 1200 by whatever and uh, your monitor can all you know and the monitor does something less so they got to be compatible in other words so make sure your video cards um, has the latest and the greatest and can send out a lot of pixels for you Anyway, the the OL the OLED monitor. This is the latest and the greatest that everybody else uses. So write this down. The organic light emitting diode monitor uses a thin LED. LED is the light emitting diode layer or or film between the two grids of electrodes and does not use backlighting like the LCD. All right, it's a lot more vivid color you get. Um, LCD monitors, by the way, they give less glare. That's something good to know. So write that down if you ever want to use one of those monitors. Less gray than OLEDs monitors, but LOED monitors are used by mo mobile devices, portable electronic devices. Um, and now they, you know, you could use them on desktops too. All right, so moving on, 
projectors. Uh, you can connect the projectors, and projectors shines you know a light to the projector. Now you can use your um, tablets, even new phones. Smartphones have uh, enable you to use the projectors to connect even wirelessly to projectors. Okay, so this is a good table to look at when in terms of uh, monitors and the different uh, characteristic. The screen size, of course, is measured diagonally. You have a 19 inch, 20 inch, 21, 30 inches, whatever. Uh, the pixel pitch is a dot on the screen. The more pixels the head, the better, right? Excuse me for a second. You know, the closer the uh, this the, the pixel pitch is, how close these dots are to, uh, close to each other. The closer, the better. Of course, you get better resolution, right, and so on. All right, so this is a good table to look at. Uh, this is the connection, and this is the VGA that we talked about earlier. This is the DVI, you know, DVID connector. Then you have the sound ports, and you have the power, right? A lot of these come um, internal to the to the drive uh, to your PC, so you may have this already installed on your system when you purchase it. It might be integrated also part of the motherboard. Okay, all right. So moving on, troubleshooting I/O devices. Uh, well, let me see here. Yeah, I want to talk about if you wanted to install another monitor. So uh, typically what you do, you just install it. If everything is all good, then you can play around. If you go to, uh, if you put up the system and your window should be able to recognize the new installed uh, monitor, you should also have a card in there. Right, and uh, you'll be able to either choose both, or use them at the same time, split the screen, do whatever you want to do with it. Pretty much. All right, let's talk about troubleshooting I/O devices. A uh, couple of things to look at. Um, the numlock indicator, by the way, sometimes if you type it on the keyboard and the and the and the numbers are not working out for you, check out the numlock. Maybe it's not there. Always visit the device manager. Extremely important. All right. It will tell you if the device has been recognized by the operating system or not. If you have an explanation mark, the device driver may not be working correctly. If you don't see it, that means the operating system did not load the device driver for it, which means your device is not going to work. So one of the first thing you need to visit if your IO device is not operating correctly, you go to the device driver. I'm sorry, the device manager, I should say. All right. And um, the other thing that you need to know is other than visiting the device manager is update the port or device driver. And you do that within the device manager. So you go, for example, assuming that this is okay. Uh, by the way, a yellow triangle tells you that there's a problem with it wasn't loaded correctly. But you can right click, you can take out, take it out. They got the device driver. So typically, if something goes wrong, and let's say the speakers on your phone, on your laptop doesn't work, you go to the device manager, uh, uninstall. Because sometimes what happens there's a conflict. If you have two sound cards, uh, one of them takes over for whatever reason, it doesn't work. So you go on uninstall the device driver and reboot the system and Windows will reload um, a new device driver for you. That works with printers too, by the way. If your printer doesn't print for whatever reason, uh, remove the device driver. You can go to the printers and you don't have to go to the device driver to do that if you want, if you don't want to, but remove the device driver and reload. And uh, Windows will reload a new device driver for you. All right. If you are troubleshooting monitors and videos, all right, follow the, follow, please follow all of these steps. 
And I'm not going to ask you to write down these, you know, problems with video cards, installation, and so on. I'm going to highlight, I want you to write down what the problems are, but you would definitely need to read these each step under, uh, for example, problems with video cards installations. This is very important reference when you are troubleshooting videos, monitors, and, project uh, and projectors. All right, so the first thing that you need to look at is write this down. Problems with video card installation. All right, so for example, when you first power up the system, you hear a whining sound. It will tell you what to do. This is probably causing that the card itself not getting enough power. Or when you start up, you don't see nothing. You see a black screen. All right, that's probably because your port is disabled. And so on. So read through these. Okay, I don't want to go through this just for this for saving time. All right. So the second thing is you should look at is to monitor indicator lights is on, but no image on the screen. What do you do? Follow these steps. Uh, number three, if the screen goes blank for 30 seconds, that's probably um, or one minute. That's probably the keyboard, you know, um, the screensaver is on, right? Um, if you have a poor display, if you cannot connect to external monitor or a projector, if the LCD cutoff button on the laptop, check for that out, right? There's one in there. And um, what else? Flickering, dim, otherwise poor videos. Replace the LCD. If you want to replace the LCD on a laptop, by the way, this is the LCD cutoff plan. Uh, to replace it, it's very easy. There's plenty of good videos on YouTube as well. All right. If you want to customize your PCs, you want to purchase a new PC for gaming, for example, several things you need to look at. Number one, the motherboard and the DRAM. Write these down when you are customizing a new PC. The processor. You want a process, you want a good motherboard that can hold a lot of DRAMs, that can hold the latest uh, CPU, probably, I guess, the i9. A processor where you want to purchase the processor with large cache memory and fast processor power, the frequency, you know, five gigahertz or so, whatever, seven gigahertz. You want a hard drive, probably SSDD with high capacity, right? And a video card, which is very important. Those are the four things. Motherboard, DRAM, motherboard and DRAM, processor, hard drive, and video card. You want maybe to run for 3, 3, 3 d graphics. Um, NVIDIA gives you the, the best, I think. All right. You can have workstations for audio and video editing workstations. So they can give you recommendations on what to look for uh gaming pcs some recommendations you probably want to get some 3d graphic cards from nvidia uh when you're talking about um, audio and video editing you probably want to have a large hard drive space right nas network large hardware space right all right so um that's it Write down whatever I asked you to write down, and that's it for Chapter 6. And I will see you in Chapter 7. Don't forget to upload your notes as homework.